Hello and welcome to The Last Word. With Italy's decision not to send back the Marines dominating the news, we ask, could India have handled this matter in a better fashion? That's with former Attorney General and Solicitor General Soli Sorabji, two of India's most highly regarded diplomats, former MEA Secretary KC Singh and former Ambassador MK Bhadrakumar, and joining us in a minute, the highly regarded defense analyst, Commodore Uday Bhaskar. Let me start with the government's handling of the Italian marine issue before I come to the manner in which the Supreme Court has handled this matter. Casey Singh, given that from the very outset, Italy did not accept the jurisdiction of the Indian courts, should India have agreed to take the matter to the International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea, or arbitration, rather than try and force the Italians to accept a verdict under Indian law? I think India was entitled to take whatever stand they wished. Uh, and this is what they did because they came under local pressure from the state. It fed into national sort of emotions were whipped up. And the government got led by the nose. But the question is, why did the Italians submit themselves to it? So that complicated it. There were mistakes made by both sides. You see last year, Karan, July 2012, an Indian, a boat just outside mm. Jabal Ali in the Gulf off the coast of Dubai, one Indian fisherman was killed, three were injured by a U.S. warship. Why did we make noise over that? Why did we ask UA to arrest the U.S. sailors? Have we bothered to even ask the Americans for custody? Now, you know, just because one incident feeds into a national thing, you turn it into a war against another country, it's a very immature of ha way of handling it. Are you saying, therefore, India's handling of this was immature? Absolutely. I'm giving you two instances of where one is dead and the other incident, we just go on. The Chief Minister of Kerala has rushed to Delhi and he is giving public statements. Prime Minister has had to speak in the House. And a lawyer of the Italian okay. embassy today turns around and says now the ambassador has no immunity. First, he's defending the case. Now he's come to the conclusion the ambassador has no immunity. So there, there are people uh, just coming to ad hoc conclusions. Uh, depending on what position they want to take in terms of public opinion. Absolutely, and the lawyer, Harish Salvi, in fact, is only expressing his own opinion. He is no judge of when the ambassador's immunity begins or ends. But Soli Sorabji, according to today's Hindu, the Supreme Court, even in January, when it ruled that Indian courts did have a jurisdiction case in this matter, provided a special court for this purpose was set up, still conceded that the Italian government would have a right to challenge India's jurisdiction in that special court. Doesn't that mean that at the end of the day, the Supreme Court left open the question of jurisdiction? You are right, Karan, but that has no relevance to the issue we are considering. The Italian government, to its ambassador, went to the court, submitted to its jurisdiction, Great for his indulgence. Let these people go. Why? Very great. They must go there to vote. Ah, under trial, prisoners can't vote. And gave a solemn mm -hmm. undertaking saying they'll return. So no. it's not a question of diplomatic no. No, 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 Forgive me, forgive it's me, me Mr. Srabji. Mr. Srabji, Mr. Srabji, Mr. Srabji, I'm not actually talking about the fact that the Italian ambassador may have lied or misled the Supreme Court. That's a different issue. I'm actually talking about the not manner lying. in which... I'm talking about the manner in which the Indian government has ab initio handled this matter. And I'm putting to you a variant of the question I put to Casey Singh. Given that the Supreme Court has left open the matter of jurisdiction, something you've just agreed, and given that the Italians have challenged India's claim to have jurisdiction, shouldn't we have actually agreed to arbitration or to let this matter go to the International Tribunal on the Law of the Sea rather than try and force the Italians to accept an Indian verdict? Well, it's a question of forcing Karam. If you dispute jurisdiction, the question of jurisdiction can be decided by the Indian court. Any party or any country disputes jurisdiction, so we go straight to another tribunal. I don't understand this. Let me tell you for the benefit of yourself, for the readers and your listeners, in a case of contempt, an undertaking was given in a civil court by a person that he would not undertake a uh, dispose of the property and all that. Okay. It turned out that court had no jurisdiction. He argued, look, I gave an undertaking with the court had no jurisdiction. That was turned down on the ground. Once you approach us, once you plead with us to give you a certain concession, then you can't turn around and say you have no jurisdiction. All right. 
That's absolutely not done, Karan. All right. Not I, done. I, I take your point, except for the fact that the Italians possibly could argue that they were forced to have to submit to the court because their two Marines were in Indian custody. But Comrade Odha Bhaskar, the truth of the matter is that the, the Indian side began by claiming that this incident had happened in Indian territorial waters, and that turned out to be factually completely wrong. The Italians, on the other hand, initially offered a joint investigation and presumably thereafter some sort of joint handling. They also opened a case of their own in the Italian courts. So even if India is allergic to arbitration or international tribunals, should we have at least accepted the Italian offer of joint investigation leading presumably to some joint handling thereafter? Well, in hindsight, I would say, Karan, that in response to your first question, that India, and we are talking about New Delhi, could have handled this better. Because with due respect to Mr. Soli Sorabji, I believe that as far as the genesis of this case is concerned, you're right, it took place in what is referred to as contiguous waters. It was outside India's territorial waters. So to that extent, I believe as an analyst that there was a case to say that India and Italy had the equivalent of shared jurisdiction. So at that point, I think India could have applied its mind and done the first thing, which is to ensure some kind of redress to the families. I mean, there is a tragedy. There are two people from India who were killed. Okay. And how do you ensure redress to the families? And then I think it could have been again handled, perhaps with greater finesse, to ensure, because this was sui generis in more ways than one. This is the first time that a warship, or bigger pardon, that the military personnel of another country True. were not on a warship, but they were on a merchant ship. They engaged in an action which led to the death of two Indian citizens. So given this context, I think New Delhi could have handled this better. But that having been said, I still maintain that today we are talking about the contempt of the Supreme Court of India. Oh, well, no, we're not actually. Forgive me. Issue. We're not talking about the contempt of the Supreme Court of India. The question that I'm actually addressing to you, and which you were invited to actually answer, is whether India could have handled this matter better. I'll come to the contempt the of the Supreme yes. Court. Yes, your answer is yes. Thank you very much. So was Mr. Yes. Casey Singh. Mr. Casey Singh, you talked about the manner in which domestic politics particularly Kerala politics and the fear that Sonia Gandhi's name would be damagingly dragged in has colored India's response and handling. And I know for a fact that, in fact, the MEA's advice to the government was not to take such an inflexible and rigid and unreasonable stand. Do you get the feeling that the MEA officials were overruled by their political masters who, in turn, bowed to pressure from Kerala? Well, that won't be for the first time, Karan, particularly when domestic politics is involved. Uh, so uh, MEA, MEA at the moment is probably a ministry which gets trampled on the most. Uh, so they, they would have expressed their opinion. But I, uh, what, you, what has been stated already, what we should have done is de-escalated it, not allowed it to go up, sat down with the Italians. And then if they were not convinced we had jurisdiction, we could have gone to the existing panel which is available, the International Tribunal of the Law of the Seas, simply to determine jurisdiction. And then if it was determined we had the jurisdiction, Italians will not have any, any crib over it. And vice versa, and we could have explained to the public opinion why this is how we could, in a civilized manner, handle it. Can, can Besides I interrupt? the can, can humanitarian I interrupt? aspect. Can, can I interrupt there? Yeah. Is it, in fact, India's allergy to international tribunals or our fear of arbitration that deterred us from taking the step that you're suggesting we should have taken? I agree with you. I think India has to get over this. This is not the Security Council Resolution of 1948. Uh, and this is not the India of 1948. Okay. If we have to play a larger role in the world, we have to accept international institutions and international law and go according to that and not become nationalistic and start declaring war on any pretext. Okay. So, Mr. Rabji, let's now come to the Supreme Court's handling of this matter. In December, when the Kerala High Court gave the two Marines permission to go home for Christmas, they also demanded a financial surety to the tune, I believe, of six crore. But in February, Whatever. when the Supreme Court gave them permission to go back and vote, no financial surety was demanded. Was that an error on the part of the Supreme Court with hindsight? 
maybe the conviction would have been put, but that's not the basic issue. They approached the Supreme Court to do what? They gave permission in December, all right. Christmas with the family, okay. But here, what was of urgent necessity? What was the paramount need? We want to vote. Well, I thought the Supreme Court was over in that judge. And but they did it on the faith of the undertaking given. I'm not concerned with this. My main concern is you can't trifle with the highest tribunal in our country. You said that the Supreme Court was overindulgent in allowing them to go home in February to vote. In other words, you believe the Supreme Court should have said, sorry, gentlemen, this is not sufficient grounds to be allowed to go home. Is that your opinion? Uh, maybe he could have, but maybe they were persuaded by Mr. Harish Salve, who appeared for them, that no, this is very important, voting and all that. And Supreme Court well said they returned in the past. There's no reason to suppose they won't return. Well, can Besides, I, can they had can, the can, undertaking can of I, can the ambassador. I, can, I, can I, in fact, take up that point that you've just ended your answer with, that the Supreme Court may have said to itself they returned in December, there's no reason to believe they won't, won't return now. The problem is that in December, when they did return, in fact, they returned in early January, it was in the hope that the Supreme Court would uphold their appeal that India has no jurisdiction in the matter. Later in that month, in fact, the Supreme Court turned down their appeal and declared that India did have jurisdiction. So then, in those circumstances, when the Supreme Court gave them permission to go out in February, the Marines actually had no incentive to return and perhaps reason not to. Is that another grounds for saying that the Supreme Court was wrong to be indulgent in February? It was another ground for saying that the Supreme Court shouldn't have believed that undertaking, which it did, because it came from an Italian ambassador, sort of undertaking. Okay. Look, current in the content matter is not between A and B. It's a sui generis offense, contempt of court, and I'm very clear that this institution, one of the wings of our government, its order should be respected, otherwise what would it take us to be? Absolutely. And I, and I, 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 I'm stopping you because I'll take up that issue in a moment's time, how the Indian government should respond to the fact that the Italian government or the Italian ambassador have deceived our Supreme Court. But first I want to ask a different question to Commodore Bhaskar. Commodore Bhaskar, almost two months have passed since the Supreme Court asked the government to set up a special court, but absolutely nothing has happened. And even in February, when the Supreme Court gave permission to the Marines to go home for four weeks, the Chief Justice in open court admonished the government for its delay not setting up a special court and asked that it now be set up without further delay. And it still hasn't happened. So how much blame lies with the government for dragging its feet? This, I think, is part of what I was trying to draw attention to, to say that New Delhi could have handled this entire case better. Because since February, when it started, as I said, this was an ab initio case. To have two military personnel on a warship, and I beg your pardon, on a merchant ship, and have them open fire on Indian citizens. Okay. So given the fact that we were entering a very gray area, I would have imagined that New Delhi should have anticipated and called the appropriate kind of expertise. Because if you read the Supreme Court judgment, it's a very nuanced judgment. Quite right. They talk about territorial waters, contiguous yeah. waters. Let's not, let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's, not, let's, not, let's not go into the details of the Supreme Court judgment. That may be a little obtuse for the audience to follow. The main point you're making is once again, the government's delay, or at least its lack of expedition, in setting up the Supreme Court suggests that it hasn't handled the matter as it effectively should have. We'll take a break at that point and then come back and tackle that critical question. How should the government now respond to the fact that the Italian ambassador looks at least as if he and his government have deceived the Supreme Court and gone back on a categoric assurance they've given that the Marines will return? That's in a moment's time. See you after this.
Welcome back to The Last Word. Gentlemen, let's come to the way the Indian government should respond to the fact that the Italian ambassador gave an assurance the Marines will return, and that assurance now is not going to be fulfilled. In fact, I Italy has gone back on it. Some people are suggesting, Casey Singh, that the Italian ambassador should be expelled. Do you go with that? Well, some people are uh, suggesting even worse. They are saying he should be arrested. Expelled is within the realm of diplomatic conduct, but arresting an ambassador would be really extraordinary. Well, answer my first question. Do you think he should be expelled? I think we should give him another 10 days. Let there be threat of expulsion, but no expulsion till then. And then what happens uh, after when 10 you days? Return to the, because when the period runs out by which the uh, two Marines should have come back, then you have to go to the Supreme Court. At that stage, we'll have to go with some action taken by Government of India to convince the Supreme Court that the insult which the Supreme Court has met is being somehow... Right. And, at that, and, at somehow that point, and at that point, as a former secretary of the MEA, would you advocate expulsion? I think that would be the least that would need to be done because he is an instrument which, con which okay. did what he did on behalf of the Italian government. All right. And therefore, to convey to his government the seriousness of the hurt which they have done to the Indian constitutional arrangement, uh, they will have to, uh, the way to convey that hurt is to send the ambassador back. All right. The least that would have to be done in 10 days' time if the Marines don't return would be expulsion. Sorry, Sarabji, according to sources, the Home Ministry is advocating that the ambassador not be allowed to invoke his diplomatic immunity. The suggestion is that, in fact, he should be arrested and perhaps prosecuted. Now, as a former Attorney General, do you think that would be a wise course of action? You know, I'm not at all in favor of his being arrested. He can certainly plead diplomatic immunity. That can be what current. The main thing is it wasn't an assurance. It was an unconditional undertaking. It wasn't conditional upon a court being set up in a particular period of time or not. That's the whole thing. But can I, can undertaking I, 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 has I, I, a different connotation. But if, therefore, he shouldn't be arrested and he can continue to hold his diplomatic immunity, what action should be taken against him in your eyes? As far as government of India is concerned, I'm not in a position to advise them what to do. What I want to know is the Supreme Court should have action to restore its authority and majesty. What action can the and Supreme Court the take? What that's action can the Supreme Court take? Contempt of court, the same action it took against other ministers. And how would that, be, how would that be executed without arresting him? No, what? Okay. Well, when you ask for contempt of court, and if he still persists in contempt, you see, these are arbitrative questions. The Marines may come back. He can purge himself of the contempt. In other words, the Supreme Court should demand an apology. Well, mere apology won't be enough. Let the Marines come back, let the undertaking be fulfilled. But the Marines are Others not coming back. The Marines are not coming back regardless of what the Indian Supreme Court says and does. So I'm asking you this critical question. What I, is it that the Supreme Court can I do? I don't know. Have you, have, you got, have you got some private information? They are not coming back. Well, the Italian government has said so. I'm accepting their word for it. Well, they will think better when the matter comes up to the Supreme Court and contempt proceedings are initiated against the ambassador. All right, Look, the Italian government will think better. Political football. Well, let's leave it there. The Italian government will think better if contempt proceedings are started Look, against okay. the ambassador. That might be a bit of wishful thinking, but you have a right to that opinion. Udha Bhaskar, let me put it like this. As today's Hindustan Times makes clear, this is not the first time something like this has happened. In 1998, the French ambassador gave an undertaking to the Supreme Court when two French citizens who'd been under trial for espionage were allowed to go back home, and they too didn't return, and that undertaking, once again, like the undertaking in this instance, turned out to be deception. And the Indian government did absolutely nothing about it. So we do have a precedent, if you believe the report in the Hindustan Times. Therefore, has our government by that precedent tied its hands? Well, I would say that India would need to review all these cases and send a very clear message, both internationally and domestically. Because today there is a very strong perception that we have different laws for different people. Okay. The fact that somebody arrested for, quote-unquote, killing two Indian citizens were not only allowed to go home, to have a festival, in this case Christmas, but they were also allowed to come into their embassy and then go to vote, 
seem to suggest both generosity and indulgence on the part of the Indian judiciary. But you're system. not, that's another matter. The second is the bureaucratic. No, no, the, the, the bureaucratic the, 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 part is forgive that me, we have to. I review. move away from all of that. What do we do with the ambassador? Just focus on that. We've got only 10 seconds. I think the first step is to perhaps quarantine the ambassador. Countries have ways of ensuring that diplomats are no longer effective. Then I'm not in favor of the expulsion, but there should be an attempt to lower the temperature. India and Italy consult okay. politically, maybe in a quiet way. And then if push comes to shove, I think India could take the next diplomatic step and then the economic step. All right. After all, India and Quite Italy right. have I, an economic I, I, relationship. I'm out of time. You've made that. it clear. First quarantine, then consider a diplomatic step, and finally the economic step, which I presume could be some form of economic sanctions. My thanks to all three of my guests for joining me. This is clearly an issue that we will be returning to in the days ahead. But for tonight, goodbye. Good night.